see ya. Welcome. Uh, hi, we heard you too fart. No, you didn't. Shut up. <laughs> no, you didn't. Stop it. Why? Why? We're here. We're here. <laughs> we're here. What? I swear to God, we're here. We're ghosts. This is an illusion. What happened? We're coming to you from beyond the grave. Ooh. Here, here. You, you, you talk. Okay. Me. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast, the most professional podcast on the you internet. It always works, no matter what. Stop it. <laughs> This is episode 127 of the show. We got a lot to talk about today. We got a Zelda trailers that we're going to talk about and discuss. What else we got going on in the show notes? We got we got some of that that hot Redfall controversy that was all the news last week. We also got um, some more gaming acquisitions going on between big companies, but not what you think. As I say this in total darkness, because we don't know what we're doing on a technical standpoint. Just to give you a, just to paint a picture of the room, I can see Bob's capture card up on the wall and all the wires taped to don't it like, like a disaster. Don't worry, we're very professional. If our dad was here, he would lose his shit because he hates seeing wires. And that's something he's instilled in me. Obviously, he did not pass that on to his younger son. I call that failure to parent. Just want to point that out there. Anywho, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, so we have video game acquisition news. We got news on the Suicide Squad game. It just keeps getting worse for them. Guess they should have just made Arkham 4 and been done with it. And a whole lot more to talk about uh, today on the show about video games. Hey, hey. we did it. Okay. All right, all right. I... I, I got so sick of elgato yeah they're the ones who make the capture cards oh, why are we still like a low frame rate i got so sick of them because uh -huh. you always have to unplug them and plug them back in right uh so i replaced all of my capture devices in the other room with aver media ones and i moved all the elgato ones into here oh oh so so it looks like you got to get some more aver media cards because you can't have if you have like more than two mm -hmm. it fucks them all up right we have three. I thought I could get away with it. Nope. But, and I set them all up and I tested everything. Aren't there... I mean, I know Elgato doesn't make it, but doesn't somebody make like a capture card for multicam setups? There is one. Yeah. It is Elgato. Okay. And it's internal. Uh, so we have to switch to that computer. Right. Okay. And uh, you don't I'm want lazy. Do yeah. <laughs> they don't make like an external one, which is very annoying. I, yeah. That's they, some, that's and something. And people keep trying to suggest me things that are not multi-camera setups like 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 uh black magic has one yeah that is a switcher okay they're all switchers they right. switch hdmi they don't actually like send all of the cameras to the computer you have to switch them it's one hdmi out basically right. yeah. and you hit the button and it switches it for you uh I think Logitech makes one, but I don't know if it's... I doubt they make one. Somebody... Logitech makes a three-camera setup. Yeah. They have three webcams that wirelessly connect to each other. Okay. But, but that's, that's not that's not what we want, because yeah. then we have to use their cameras. Yeah. Anyway, hello. Um, We got notifications from King Wizard. Thanks for the 10 months. Hey, yo, it's podcast day. What it do, baby? Hello. Hey. Thanks for the 10 months. Big Boosh, thanks for the 18 months. Aw, and ew, an ad. Hi, Will and Bob. Hello. Yeah, if you get ads, uh, use uh, Twitch Prime. Yeah. Then you don't get ads anymore. That's. I mean, it's your own fault, really. The Real Guy-ish, thank you for the five months. How would you rate how hot Tears of the Kingdom Ganon is on a scale from 1 to 10? Mm. He's, he's, a little, he's a little big for me. Yeah, eight and a half. I'd say I get it. Like, I get I it. I get it. I get it. Like, it definitely an eight and a half. Like, a solid eight and a half. Yeah. yeah. Not my type. Yeah. But he, I could see I where could the see 10 why, comes I could see, from. Yeah, exactly. Uh, is that it? No. T-Bird, thanks for the six months. Uh, you want to talk about the free game that people can get right now? Yes. Let me do that while I try to fix this again. Because <laughs> we're a low frame rate. So, we always like to start off the show with a free game that you can get uh, for the month. We usually do PlayStation Plus or Xbox Live Gold. But Nintendo comes along, and they don't have a set schedule. They just do it, you know, on their own because they're Nintendo. Uh, starting on 420, 
blazing. Um, <laughs> Star Wars Republic Commando will be free to play in its entirety at no cost for Switch Online subscribers. And this will be available from 420 to April 26th. Um, and you don't have to be a, an expansion pack member. This is for anyone with base Switch Online subscription. You get the full access to Star Wars Republic Commando. And not only that, but the if you want to buy the game, if, you, if you're playing the, the trial and you like it so much you want to buy it, it will be available for 50% off um, until April 26th. So when the promotion ends, uh, it will no longer be 50% off. And not only that, Nintendo Switch Online members can earn 100 My Nintendo Platinum points by participating in this game trial. If you're into that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is cool news. Star Wars Republic Commando. Um, very popular Star Wars game from the original Xbox era. It is basically uh, Rainbow Six or Ghost Recon, but with clone troopers. Um, you've played it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have not, actually. And I have it on two different systems. Uh, maybe I'll actually play it on this. You did a spot report. No, that's right. You did. Very cool. Yes. Um, so, yes. It's a, it's a tactical squad-based shooter where you are in control of a squad of clone troopers. And you go around and you do missions. This is not... Uh, Order 66, because this came out in between episode 2 and 3. So it is... Uh, you're still the good guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's yeah, that's important to note. Uh, frame rate's a little wonky, but okay. it is what it is. Whatever. Uh, so there you go. Get yourself a free trial yeah. of Republic Commando. I would say this is probably the... the biggest profile game that they've done this. Because they've done this with a lot of other games before. Uh, they've mm-hmm. done it with a couple of indie games. They did it with uh, one of the FIFA games, and now they're doing it with a Star Wars game. That's yeah, cool. that's that's yeah. very strange. They they've been doing a lot of big high profile games. Yeah. And Republic Commando is a good game. Yeah. It's it's uh it's an old game, but if you've played old Xbox 360 games, <laughs> you'd probably enjoy this. Oh, original Xbox, older than that. It's original Xbox, yeah. yeah. But uh, you know, if you if 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 you can stomach older games, then yeah. you'll you'll like it. If you if you were born in the last. 15 years then probably probably not. don't play it yeah. um coma tpg thanks for the prime and kurumi's weeb thanks for the prime okay uh the frame rate's still a little weird but whatever no, I, I i give up it is what it is i'm gonna i'm i already bought another aver media for it here so <laughs> that's go already going on an aver media but the other t- i don't want to spend so much goddamn money on uh, yeah. you know i have capture cards already yeah it's very. I am very annoyed. Also, he's another. Let me continue my rant on, okay. on capture cards and Elgato. The stupid cam link yes. that you, that you, that everybody has to plug the cameras into the computer. Yes, doesn't do twenty four frames a second. Really, it's a cam link. Yeah, it's for the. It's a it's capture for the card camera. for the camera, and it doesn't do twenty four frames per second. That's dumb. Yes, it it always looks. It does 60, but it looks something's weird. Yeah. Something's a little weird with it. See, I always thought the dumbest thing about that was they have still not made a USB-C version of it. Yes, that is also... Okay, so they <laughs> do have a Thunderbolt and USB-C Black Magic one. Right. That is a capture card and audio interface. Oh. That's pretty cool. Yes. It is $1,000, though. Rode actually is now making one of... Uh, audio and video they haven't announced a price yet that's but it's awesome like this big that i like so, that that was, i like yeah. that but it doesn't work for this room because we need a yeah. multi-interface yeah um the other room maybe i also uh i was telling will uh my sm7b just farted out so everything sucks yeah life is terrible don't get into this profession <laughs> you know what i did say well i went to brooklyn for a thing that i can't talk about okay i was in traffic for two hours going there and two hours coming back. Wow. Waste of a day. Yeah, that, that's awful. I would understand if you would have wanted to have canceled today. I slept. Uh, I slept for like 20 minutes. Uh, <laughs> and I wasn't expecting to sleep. Yeah. So I woke up like 15 minutes before. Nice. I was okay. supposed to. <laughs> I was like, ah! <laughs> and here I was afraid I was running very late. No. I had just finished like setting, resetting everything. Because else. somebody refused to go to bed. 
I was ready to uh, listen. You could have put me to bed. Yeah. Tears of the Kingdom. Is coming yes. Up. Are you excited? I'm uh, so excited. This yeah. Looks so cool. Wow. Like I'm not gonna get it, but like I <laughs> I, I can feel okay. the excitement. Like I have excitement from other people's excitement for it. You know. So I didn't really care. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. I didn't really like. I was gonna get it and I was gonna play it, but I wasn't really that excited about it. Uh, until. I went back and played Breath of the Wild again, and I and I just went right to Ganon, yeah. and I was like, "That was pretty fun. That was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I would do that again." And now I'm getting that again. I'm gonna get to jump into that world again, and right. I think that should be pretty fun. And then this trailer is actually really sick, and this yeah, trailer this actually trailer. made me kind of excited yeah. for the game all of a sudden. Uh, so here we go. News: The Legend of Zelda: Tears of the Kingdom trailer shows Link's allies. I didn't even. This is going to show me things that I didn't even realize. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nintendo has shared one last trailer before uh, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom arrives May 12th. And this one is worth watching if you are looking for some insight into the story. The rather lengthy clip showcases uh, not only a large and varied world, including float- floating islands above Hyrule, but Link's abilities. As Zelda makes clear, you are not alone. There's even a moment where Link offers a wagon ride. Ooh. Uh, the plot appears familiar. Surprise, you'll have to find Zelda and defeat Ganon. Instead, it's the gameplay mechanics that promise to help Tears of the Kingdom set itself apart from Breath of the Wild. The Skyborne Islands factor uh, factor play a large role, of course, and the reliance on fused together weapons and vehicles is clearer in the new trailer. You can even build a robot to take on uh, Bokoblins. Uh, Bokoblins. I don't know how what they're I don't know. pronounced. Uh, that's it's a, it's a made up fucking word. You can pronounce it <laughs> however you want. Uh, that have their own battle platform. Uh, the game is arriving alongside Tears themed pro controllers uh, and a carrying case. Uh, you can also buy a special edition OLED switch on April 28th for $350 if you're new to the platform or are itching to upgrade from an early model console or if you're an insane person and just like buying switches. Uh, There's people like that, yes, believe it or not. Yes. I, yes. <laughs> Uh, as the hardware and flurry of trailers suggest, Nintendo wants to be wants to be sure that you're paying attention to the company's most important game of the year. I forgot what the Tears of the Kingdom Pro Controller looks like. It looks like that. There it is. Uh, the white on one side is an interesting choice. Yeah, they gotta put a little more effort in. Like th- this is the first one with gold. I- no, it's not. The Monster mm-hmm. Hunter one is. Um, the thing is, like most of their like special edition Pro Controllers are still black. They're black and they follow the exact same themes. Yeah. But they did a Splatoon one with different grips. So why couldn't they just paint the grip? I don't know. Paint the grip green or yeah. something. Like this this uh this is lazy. I mean it's a cool design, but like give us pro controller colors. Like it's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, especially when, you know, PlayStation not, not to compare them to PlayStation Xbox, but like they offer different color controllers. For their first party controllers. Yeah. You know, like I'm surprised Nintendo. Nintendo of all companies is not offered like a red pro controller or a blue pro, pro yeah, controller. Yeah, they do. They don't care about the pro controller. They they, they do uh, Joy Cons. Yeah, they do Joy Cons. And they do a lot of great colors of Joy Cons. I'm surprised they don't have a pro controller for every color of Joy Con. Yeah. They they just don't care about the pro controller for some reason. And and, and they don't even sell them. Like, like they, they, <laughs> they run out They're of hard stock to get. so easy. Yeah. Seventy-five dollars for this too, by the way. Yeah. Usually, pro controllers are seventy, which is still a lot of money. Yeah. Anyway, uh, oh yeah, and then also the Switch, but uh, that I think looks pretty cool. Yes. Uh, but again, I wish the actual Switch was colored, but it's mm-hmm. not. But I mean, the dock looks cool, and the and the Joy-Con looks cool. Um, we're gonna go through the trailer. Yes. Or one of these articles. Which article should I look at? Um, the you m- mentioned the the mech. That you build, the yes. robot you build. Yes. That was fucking sick. That was and we'll, cool, yeah. we'll go we'll go through that. Um, do you want to do the pick a pick one? Pick one. All right, we'll do the the pocket tactics one because okay. it's, it's shorter. Okay. All right. So we'll just Oh no wait. Is this the Okay, no, yeah, it yeah. is because okay. All right. Skip to new abilities. Wow. Uh Recall, Fuse, Ultra Hand, and Ascend are everything we've seen so far, but we don't know if there are others waiting. Uh, watch the stream to get an understanding of each of these yourself, but our minds are already racing. Uh, so they're talking about like all the new abilities you can do with um, with the Sheikah Slate. Or okay. if it even is 
the Sheikah Slate. I don't think the Sheikah Slate's in the game. I haven't seen it at probably all in just the trailer. His hand. Probably the Sheikah Slate fused with his hand. There you go. Confirmed. I, I think show. that's. I I think that his hand is definitely where the powers come from. Yeah. It's possible the Sheikah Slate fused with his hand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Link's new look. Our first glimpse at the actual gameplay. We now have confirmation that Link's ruined arm and toga look is the is an outfit that you can equip. While other trailers also show Link in his blue uh, champion tunic from Breath of the Wild, we suspect this new look is how Link starts his adventure. The first trailer show uh, shows Link reaching out uh, for a glowing green hand, similar to energy Link, uh, similar to the energy Link's gnarled hand uses. So we have a hunch that those events kickstart the game and lead to Link's new look. We also expect to be able to find and equip new outfits, much like in Breath of the Wild. Uh, the Zoni are confirmed. Zon uh, Zonai. Z Zora? Z O N A I. Who's. Z O N A I. It, who, who are they? I don't the know. The wet people? Yes. Uh, gameplay footage not only confirms that the Zoni are a major part of the story, but also that they are Zoni enemies, weapons, and presumably magic. This tribe could be the key to Link's new abilities, as the similarities between these enemies, and the magic, and Link's new powers are too strong to be a coincidence. There's actually nothing about them that, that, that I think they're game specific. Okay. Zonai tribe, ancient tribe that's extinct. Okay, so okay. this is things that we will learn about in the game probably maybe. Yeah. Uh, all you need to know is they're an ancient race of magic barbarians that existed alongside the original Sheikah clan. They're also partially responsible for helping to seal Ganon away, so it's not a struggle. Okay. I wanted to mention you said that uh, you, you mentioned the part uh, the, where where Link like touches hands with Zelda and then yeah. the arm fuses or whatever. That part uh, they showed it again and it's different this time. Yeah, it, it it it's just very slightly different, like updated. Mm -hmm. uh, caves. We already know that caves are appearing thanks to the trailers for Tears of the Kingdom, but now we have a good idea of how they will show up in the world. And how there is a uh, sign posted on the map. An icon is visible for caves as well as a tick. So it seems that the map marks each cave. Uh, the map marks each cave entrance once Link passes through them. Almost like you're completing the challenge within each one. So there's gonna so the caves are going to be like dungeons. Yes. Okay. Uh, the dragons from Breath of the Wild return as uh, considering the Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, we're spending a lot more time in the sky. We're likely to spend a lot more time with them. Uh, we get a glimpse of the Nadra atop of Mount Lanaru, uh, but we also get a peek of a dragon with a color pattern we didn't recognize. Uh, we also explore more of the skies. It's clear as we explore more of the skies. It's clear uh, we are set to find more creatures uh, up among the clouds. I didn't know there were dragons in Breath of the Wild. Me neither. Well, they're the divine beasts. Those are tech some of those are technically dragons. Isn't one of them no. like a, wasn't one of them an actual one's dragon? a flying bird thing? Okay, yeah, that's that's it. Okay, so as far as I know, like because I did that one. Okay, but I didn't. I don't remember. You know what I remember? There was a dragon thing in uh, Sonic Frontiers. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh. Anyway, uh, co-oriented a uh, uh, coordinates coordinates ahoy. <laughs> Well, I, you know what? They put a dash in it. Yeah. Didn't need that dash. No. Uh, speaking of the sky, one neat addition to the HUD in Tears of the Kingdom is coordinates. Uh, we now have a clear signifier of latitude, longitude, and altitude, making it easier to see exactly how high up Link is. Uh, this is very helpful for finding places and sharing with friends uh, when you make a good discovery. Frankly, it's also going to be a godsend for guides. Yeah. Um, that's good that they actually... Include not only latitude and longitude, but also altitude. Because, like, you know how confusing it gets when, like, you're trying to, like, look at a map and you don't know, like, what level you're supposed to be on? Yeah, that's annoying. Uh, th there's in a, every game. There's a lot in Breath of the Wild, so anything that helps uh, figuring out where you are on the map is, yeah. is very helpful. And also, like, yeah, guides, like, it's really annoying to look at a guide and go, oh, you need to go to the Zopi runes yeah. and like then you have to find it on the map but the map doesn't have all of the names on yeah. it so you have to find a map on a fucking austin john video or something yeah. so it's like go here and like you don't realize there's like a big mountain blocking your way so you have to find a way around yeah yeah so so, so you having coordinates is that. good is that your computer or my or that computer? my computer holy hell no this thing just sometimes wants to be a jet engine hannah's uh uh 2015 yeah macbook 
Dead. Rip. Yeah. R.I.P. The, um, the the logic board, uh, the backlight isn't working. So the the, the lot it's a it's mm. dead on the on the logic. Board. I'm like this close to just pulling the trigger on a new MacBook. Mm. The, so is she. <laughs> the refurbished M1 16 inch with the uh storage space and RAM that I want is a really good price. Wait. M1. M1 Pro, Pro. or just M1? M1 Pro. Oh. 16 inch. It's a really good price. But the problem is you can't buy a refurbished MacBook in installments. Uh, like it's it's 2300 uh, at once. Okay. And I don't know if I have that okay. right now. A new MacBook I can buy in installments. Like 200 something a month. So I have to use your big boy credit card. Yeah. I use don't... big boy credit card and pay that off. Yeah. How much is the, is the, is the refurbished one? Uh, 2,300. Okay. That I would mean, take. Yeah. Well, you, you're, it's, it's more than the baseline, right? Cause yeah. the baseline is 2,500. Well, remember it's refurbished and it's last year's model. It's, Oh, the, yeah, but it, the new this year's model, the baseline with with nothing, you get it's like twenty five, and that's fourteen inch, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's a good point. That's a good deal, then. Yeah, that's good. So I'm just still waiting to see how I want to pay for this. I will say this: this bad boy has been doing good. I, you know, because the thing is, like, I because this is thirteen inch, mm-hmm. and I do fine with thirteen inch, and I'm gonna wind up hooking it up to an external monitor anyway. But then I see the 16 inch. I'm like, Ooh. yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I I mean that one that I used to have is is yeah. I know that inches. and I know that I was inch. fine with it. Yeah, uh, yeah. But Hannah doesn't want nothing to do with that. Yeah. My next question though is, this is help me buy a MacBook, everybody. <laughs> um, my next question though is, do I even bother? Uh, do I just get the base model M1 Pro chip? Or do I upgrade it? Because I don't need a Max chip. I definitely I know I don't definitely don't need a Max chip. Yeah, it's way overkill. Yeah. Like, but do I get the next level up M1 Pro or M2 no. Pro? Just the base model? Whatever you, whatever you're going to do on it, it'll handle it fine. Yeah, that's what yeah. I figure. Yeah. Unless you're color grading friggin' two layers of video at once, you're, you're yeah, going to be, you're gonna be fine. I think I'm ever going to be doing that. Yeah. So. You're, you're, you're good. Okay. All right. Anyway, tower power. Tower. <laughs> Woo! Uh, we've already seen all these tall structures and trailers, but the latest gameplay stream gives us a great look at new towers. We don't exactly know how they operate, but uh, but on a more than one occasion, we see a mini map on the HUD display a blank screen. Therefore, it is likely that the towers operate in the same way as in Breath of the Wild, revealing the topography of the area. However, we also see that the map change uh, between the ground and the sky. Sky. Island. Sky. <laughs> I almost threw up a mouth. So we might have twice the map to uncover this time around. Oh, that would suck if you have to like go to the towers for the land and the sky. You got to do double the amount of towers to like reveal more of the map. Yeah. Like why can't like why can't the sky tower just re- cuz like it's the sky. You could see Yeah, everything. yeah, yeah, yeah. It should it okay. If you get to the tower on the mainland it doesn't reveal the sky. This is right. my theory. It doesn't reveal the sky. But if you just go to the sky, it'll reveal everything. Because, mm-hmm. like, I mean, what are the chances you're going to get to the sky before you get to the yeah. main tower, you know? Unless you start in the sky. Yeah. I mean, so you can... They they show you... Uh, well, this isn't the last trailer, but they show you, like, dropping, like, diving out of the, the, the sky. So yeah. like, it seems like you can jump out of the sky areas and just pretty much fly wherever you want. Yeah. So that's that's cool. It just it will take forever for you to get where you want to go because you fall for a really long time. Yeah. This is my favorite part. Link the builder. Uh, Link's new ultra hand ability allows him to stitch items together to create vehicles, weapons, and much more. Uh, we're already aware of the makeshift cars, balloons, and other modes of transportation. And now we also see areas that uh, have certain building materials laying around. The end of Breath of the Wild sees Zelda mentioned rebuilding Hyrule. So much like the Terrytown quest, um, perhaps this time around Link is actually helping to rebuild villages and towns for the people of Hyrule. Where's the... Oh, 
okay, I don't give a shit about that. <laughs> I th- I was like, where's the robot? That's what I ca- okay. That's coming. We're, okay. we're I, I'm jumping the gun here. Uh, spirals in Hyrule. Another new structure in Hyrule are these rising spirals with green energy surrounding what looks like a cone. Uh, we see markers for these on the cones. Map. There'll be uh, cones in the game. We see markers on for these on the map, not dissimilar to the icons used for shrines in Breath of the Wild. Could these cones uh, be your new shrines? Laying dormant uh, ordinarily, but later displaying green energy when completed and act as a fast travel point. Uh, the Zonai were a warrior race. It isn't a stretch to assume they might make trials similar. They might make uh, trials similar to those of the Sheikah. In fact, we already know they made labyrinths from Breath of the Wild. Wow. There you go. Ooh, so that wait, was, are yeah, the Zonai going to be a big deal? And are they? Ooh, okay. I have theories. It sounds like they are. And it does sound like that these might be the new um, shrines. So we haven't, we didn't really get much of Ganon in the trailer. I don't know if we're going to see that later. No, it's not in this at all. There's like a very brief glimpse of Ganon, but yeah. you get, we got a much bigger glimpse. I'll just show it now. Okay. We got a much bigger glimpse of him uh, through artwork later on. Yeah. Hot Ganon. Hot Daddy Ganon. Ganon. Ganondorf, we should clarify. Because Ganondorf is the man. Ganon is the beast. I didn't know that. You call yourself a fan. Not of Zelda. <laughs> I fucking hate Zelda. Um, yes, Ganon is the beast. Ganondorf, Dragmire is the man. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought they were. I thought it was just short for Ganondorf. No. Well, here he is. Ganondorf uh, turns into Ganon. He... he I think he looks playable. I had that theory myself. I think Zelda. I think Link turns into Ganon Dorf. Ooh, that's what that'd I be cool. I think that's what's gonna happen. That'd be cool. I feel like there's gonna be some sort of wacky team up. Yeah, where Link and Ganon are gonna have to do something, and, and may, maybe these Z- Zorn Zornai guys, the Zorns, maybe these Zorns guys, <laughs> maybe they're uh, the real bad guys. Yeah, yeah. That'd be interesting. And, or and then you know, and then they team up, beat him, and then Ganon is the final boss. He turns yeah. at the very end. Ganondorf confirmed to be voiced by D and D nerd uh, Matt Mercer. Yes, who also played him in the old ass web series. There will be brawl. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so it all comes full circle. Wow. Usually Nintendo is not about that. No, no, they'll kill you if you do any fan. <laughs> any fan work that was a weird ass web series you ever watch that no it was basically like uh they took smash brothers and they made it like just an underground like fight pit thing oh i heard of it yeah it's it's wacky i used to watch it in college i and i'm old (laughs) i am excited to see if they put this version of ganon in smash i like this i like this like samurai ganon like i want something I want to be able to play it. Yeah, this. it'll definitely not ultimate, but whatever the next yeah. Smash Brothers. The thing is, is, Ganon has this like giant sword, and it's yeah. like slow. And this is a samurai sword. It looks yeah. like so. It's interesting. I I I, I want this. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, from sail to rail. Uh, what the does new that mean? the new Sky Islands are the main feature of Tears of the Kingdom, but traveling between them might be difficult. Well, it seems that Nintendo has thought of everything, and we saw a glimpse at rails seemingly connecting these islands. Uh, one shot even shows a large orb next to these rails and some carts. Uh, so could the orb power the carts on the rails? Uh, getting to cart around the sky hundreds of feet above Hyrule sounds like a wild blast. Um, So it looks like there are ways to travel between different floating islands, or maybe it's just something that keeps them connected. <laughs> so this... So we're not we're not saying like like uh Bioshock Infinite. Oh wait, they do it is like I remember one of the trailers did have like Sonic Adventure grinding. Did it? I think so. See, I'm thinking more like it's gonna be like Bioshock Infinite where like you had like the sky rails and you had that like hook arm that like you used to ride. Them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. Yeah. There was there was I re- I remember grinding. I mean, if they're doing like this weird like elaborate building system where like you can literally build anything in the game i'm sure they're gonna they thought to put grinding rails and i'm i'm almost positive now i gotta see if i can find 
Because I remember there were memes about it. Yeah. Where the, where they just put fucking. Am I thinking of a different game? First trailer had rails he grinds on. I'm looking at trailer number one. Uh, it's gonna be hard to yeah find it in here without just straight up watching the whole thing. Also, <laughs> I noticed that this article doesn't have the fucking robots. It doesn't. I didn't see. I didn't see no robots. Maybe it's trailer two. Maybe it's trailer two. Maybe. I mean, the other one was like point, 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 point. This is another thing. We we got to look at Ganon, but all the previous looks at Ganon we got were like, like, emaciated. Yeah. That that little scary Ganon. Uh, there are a total of six in the trailer. Six what? Uh, now I'm just sitting. Oh, there he is! He's oh, grinding. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Boop. Uh, yep, there we go. He's literally, it's yeah. literally Sonic Adventure grinding. Yeah. So that also got so me there you excited go. about the game. Sonic Adventure Two is the blueprint, folks. We yes. Figured it out. Uh. Yeah, I mean that's really all we need to talk about. But the the, yeah. the 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 freaking building is the biggest part, the the thing that I thought was the craziest. Yeah. Because, like, like, look, I'm not gonna sit here and and I mean I'm probably gonna end up building shit for like a long time in the game. Yeah. But I that's mean, not what I'm like trying to do. I I just think uh, the way that you build stuff will just unlock a lot more to do in the game. Like, oh, yeah. like, like people right now spend thousands of hours playing the game, just like figuring out how to like traverse the land and like do wacky shit with the physics uh-huh. and being able to build shit. I didn't even realize this, this, uh, this freaking they're like on a horse drawn carriage that was built with the stupid little putty <laughs> thing. So it's just a carriage, yeah. but they still use the putty thing. There's just going to be so much more you can do if you can if you can uh, uh, connect things together. Yeah. Did you see there was another trailer that leaked right after the big trailer dropped, and it showed uh, off some more areas, bosses, and uh, no, I I did no. not see that. I saw I saw a commercial, but it didn't really show that yeah. much. This is the robot. Uh, that guy. Yes. Look at that. Yes. So it looks, so I got a weird take on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I posted this and I thought this looks awesome. I think it's awesome that you can build a little mech that Link clearly rides on and can fight another mech that somebody else built. Mm -hmm. Um, Somebody on Twitter said, uh, this is horrible for, for, this is horrible news for uh, mainstream or, 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 no, this is horrible news for casual Zelda fans people who just want to play the game how just play the game yeah. you don't have to you are not gonna have to do this you can clearly just ju- if you, you first of all you could probably just avoid this altogether yeah but if you didn't want to build a whole mech thing you could probably just jump on that and kill them all yeah like there's a little hill right there just jump on it and kill mm-hmm. them you don't have to build a whole mech you can climb it like your freaking shadow of the colossus so there's plenty. There's going to be a million different ways you can play this game, and that's what I think is very exciting about it. And th- I will say that the mech that they built for Link right here is ugly. It's just a big. That's got to be like a starter mech. Yeah, you know, it does have an arm, so that's pretty yeah. cool. But like, so probably by the end of the game, you'll get to make like an actual like Gundam. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I want. That yeah. would be sick. Uh. All right, so that's that's pretty much it for for Tears of the Kingdom. Yes, I will be playing it. It looks fun. I will probably play it many years from now. <laughs> but like I said, like the game looks good. I enjoyed Breath of the Wild. I think I think people who are going to play it are going to enjoy it. I just I feel like this is a game I can wait to play. You know, yeah, that's all. Yeah, uh, I I want to play it immediately because I have to be. You know, yeah, you've got. It. I gotta I be. I don't no. gotta be shit. <laughs> I don't know how much I'm going to play of it. If it's anything like Breath of the Wild, like it's a game like you can just, you know, it's a forever game. You know, you can pick it up and play whenever you want. I hope you can run to the boss. 
oh, I'll just do that the first day. Just try that over and over again and yeah. see what happens. <laughs> but yeah, uh, when is this out? May May twelfth. Twelfth. Okay. Cool. Oh, that's weird. Okay. What? Why is that weird? Um, it's not weird. Okay. <laughs> uh, can I? Say why that's weird. Uh, hold, hold, uh, there, there's an embargo for a, a specific handheld device that has nothing to do with Nintendo. Oh, okay. That uh, lifts May 11th. Okay. So that kind of fucks up a lot of things. Yeah. If Breath of the Wild, but not. I guess not. I guess not who really. do I care? I yeah. don't really care. It's it's not a big deal for me. It would be a big deal for some other uh, YouTubers. Hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm gonna play that. It's gonna be great. Okay. That week's gonna be wacky and wild. Do we go through? Yeah, we went through all the Zelda stuff. Yeah. Uh. Anyway, Rope Dog. Thanks for the six months. Uh. Now let's talk about Redfall. Oh getting boy. worse all the time. Oh boy. Hope you're all ready for the frame rate debate. <laughs> oh boy. When it, Arcane... it, now in this case, I agree. Yeah. Uh, when Arcane Studio launches its uh, vampire hunting shooter Redfall in May, it will ship on Xbox with frame rate capped at 30 frames per second, according to the game's official Twitter account. The ability to play at 60 frames per second in performance mode will be added to the game at a later date, Arcane announced on Wednesday. Redfall is launching on Xbox uh, consoles in quality mode only, the Redfall account reads. Uh, that means 30 frames per second at 4K resolution on Xbox Series X and 30 frames per second at 1440p resolution on Xbox Series S. Um, what is it? Arcane Explain. Uh, Redfall will also launch on Windows PC May 12th, Breath of the Wild Day, uh, where it will seemingly Everyone's not... competing with, with Zelda. That's such a terrible That's, idea. That is like... Oh, that really is. This like, game is going to crash and burn. Yeah. Um... Arcane uh, Redfall will launch on PC on May 12th, where it will seemingly not be performance constrained as PC players can push towards 60 frames per second uh, and beyond with more powerful hardware. Oh, that's good. Reaction to this Redfall announcement has been resoundingly negative, with numerous comments on Twitter calling for a delay or a 1080p 60 frames per second version on Xbox platforms. A delay for Redfall seems unlikely at this stage, given that the game was already pushed out of 2022 last May in order to deliver the best and most polished version of the game, publisher Bethesda said at the time. Arcane's announcement echoes the console performance woes of another recent release, last year's Gotham Knights, another co-op open-world loot-focused game that suffered from delays and performance issues. Redfall is coming to Windows PC and Xbox Series X on May 2nd, and it will uh, it will launch day one on Xbox on uh, Microsoft's Game Pass subscription service. It will also be the first Xbox first party game to launch at the higher sixty nine ninety nine price tag. Oh, I didn't realize that. It's the first. Yeah, it'll be their first, first party game. Yeah, interesting seventy dollar game. Uh. Oh wait, it's coming on May second. I'm I'm confirmed. Yeah, May second. So what happened on May twelfth? I think that was a mistake. Yeah, that was a, that was a typo. It's coming May second. It's coming May second, everybody. Wow, plenty of time for Zelda. Um, they, they said in this article that fans are calling for a 1080p 60 frames per second option on Xbox. Yeah. I'm telling you, the performance mode that will come later is going to just be that. I'm yeah. telling you, they probably just can't hit the 60 right now. Yeah, uh, that's ridiculous. We're getting so much more power in the we, this is all stuff that we had issues with the last generation yeah and we have so much more power now to work with um they can't they, they can't figure it out like, yeah like i i appreciate the fact that it it is coming like that's good but at the same time like this is supposed to be like microsoft has a very has had a very bad track record with first party titles and now here you have a first party title that is going to be on your premier uh, game subscription service and it's going to come in a worse version than what's going to come eventually. You know, that's not really putting your best foot forward. No. You know, and it's it's disappointing 
no it, it's disappointing for a lot of people uh it's dis- I, like i wasn't like the most interested in this game but it's disappointing to me because that like that does that just shows bigger problems at you know the greater microsoft game studio you know i wonder if this issue is because of the series s like they could very easily just have quality mode only on the series s yeah but i'm wondering if microsoft was like no you have to have the same settings on both that probably could that that would yeah that would i, I would sense. imagine like my you know especially because it's microsoft they want you know as close to parity on both systems as possible and they can't have one necessarily run at a lower frame rate than the other Mm -hmm. because they both can do like i think i think they both can do the same frame rates yeah yeah but you know just one can't do 4k the other can so this game was originally developed to be cross platform like for everything and yeah and uh maybe if they knew it was going to be only on xbox they would have developed it differently from the start in order to try to make it run similarly on the weaker series s yeah. and the series x well i will say this definitely like puts a little wrinkle in sony's argument that you know microsoft could put out a worse version of call of duty on playstation because it looks like they're putting out a worse version <laughs> of their own game yeah on xbox and they wouldn't even allow it to go on playstation it seems like the pc version will be fine so yeah. at least that's good and again like they did promise a 60 frames per second version coming later mm-hmm. but this is not the type of thing you want to uh, come out at a later date this no. is something you want immediately especially when you're not saying when that 4k uh that 60 frames per second version is coming yeah they're very it's a very strange yeah. thing that happened um i'm not getting it i'm not interested in this at all i mean it looks cool but i'm not sure it does it, it does but i don't think it looks cool enough yeah to like run out and get it especially if we're getting like the worst version yeah immediately Anyway, this just in. M. Schroeder just let us know in the chat right now. Ooh! Um, four classic Sega Genesis games have been at, uh, made available for Nintendo Switch Online plus expansion pack. Whoa. Including... Oh! Pulseman! Pulseman! Pulseman, baby! Pulseman is Japanese only. Yes. So, uh, that's a huge... And it's great. Yes. Uh, Pulseman developed by Game Freak. The Pokemon really? people. I didn't yeah. know that. That was the big deal about that game. Yeah. It's, it's very pretty. It's Pokemon. a very yeah. pretty game. Here it is. It's fucking awesome. It's sure to crush the bit rate of the video right now. But. Yeah. Uh, Pulse Man is a 1994 Japanese action platformer developed by Game Freak and published by Sega. It was released in North America for the Sega channel in 1995. Jesus. Do you remember what the Sega Channel was? Yeah, we begged our parents to get it. Wouldn't get it for us. The Sega Channel was a subscription service uh, through your cable company where you uh, get a little box that you plug into your Sega Genesis, hook it up to a cable line, and it would actually stream Sega Genesis games to you uh, for $15 a month. <laughs> yeah, that you that's thought, crazy. You think Netflix is expensive now. <laughs> so... That's originally what video games were supposed to be. They were supposed yeah. to be through cable. Yeah. And thank God something happened. Yeah. Uh, someone's got to be an innovator, and it was Sega. There uh, is a guy. Google uh, 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 commemorated him. There was a guy who's who is credited for making games on a cartridge instead of being a TV channel. Ralph Bear. That's the guy? No. That's no. The, that's the guy who made... No, the console. Yeah, we're talking about the uh, Fairchild Channel F. Yeah. We talked about it on this yes. podcast. And I said how, like, because he was African-American, sometimes his, you know, accomplishments get downplayed. And I can't remember his fucking name. Yes. I'm part <laughs> of the problem. Uh, Gerald Jerry Lawson. Yep. That's it. Jerry, Jerry Lawson. Lawson. Yeah. He's That's the it. reason that we had cartridges or individual games. Yes. Ralph Bear wanted to do it through TV stations. Well, he just want he he's the one the magnum guy yeah. he's the reason why we have consoles at all yes um but he wanted to do it through channels no network wanted it so then it's really just made a box yeah yeah anyway okay pulse man <laughs> pulse man's good play that that is yes. a good game uh also coming street fighter 2 special champion edition that's crazy yeah um this was the game that forced sega to make the six button controller really yeah because you can't play Street Fighter with just three buttons. True. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, you need at least four. Yeah, I mean, there's a way to do it, but it sucks. Yeah. Uh, also, Kid Chameleon and Flicky. Uh, I don't know. I don't know Flicky. Flicky oh, this looks terrible. Uh, yeah, it's it's not a great game. It's like one of those early Sega arcade games, like that they tried to keep putting on systems. But like once you know Sonic and all the actual good games come on, like they don't care about this one i also don't know anything about kid chameleon i know the name but i've never seen this before uh i think kid chameleon the whole thing with that is like he gets sucked into a video game and he can like wear different helmets and stuff to get abilities okay but like the whole thing is like he's a cool dude he's a cool 90s dude yeah dude whatever man play pulse man pulse yeah man's pulse sick. man and you know if you haven't had played enough street fighter on your switch here's another fucking version of street fighter <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's talk about Mario theme added to the Library of Congress. The Library of Congress has announced its 2023 class of National Recording Registry inductees, and it includes a video game song for the first time. The honor goes to the classic Super Mario Brothers theme, officially Beep, titled boop, bop. Ground Theme. It was composed by Nintendo's Koji Kondo and first appeared in 1985 Super Mario Brothers in World 1-1. That, that, that was a good pronunciation. Thank you. I figured I'm not going to say Kochi Kondo. Like in- I would have said that. Yeah. I would If I read that, I would have uh, said that. The song has since become the most well-known melody of the Mario franchise, not to mention one of the most recognizable video, uh, music tracks in all the video games. Now it will forever be preserved alongside some of pop culture's most famous and influential songs. Having this music preserved alongside so many other classic songs is such a great honor, said Kondo in a statement. It is actually a little bit difficult to believe. Mario's classic tune will be inducted alongside heavy hitters such as Madonna's Like a Virgin, Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville, Queen Latifah's All Hail the Queen, and Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. That's crazy. Uh, You can read the full list of inductees at the Library of Congress's website. Uh, This is quite the achievement for Nintendo and especially Kondo. Uh, who has lent his talents to numerous other Nintendo soundtracks and has also has a hand in composing the theme for the very successful Super Mario Brothers movie. Would you consider the Mario Brothers theme to be more popular than all of those other songs? I would say... Because think about the global effect that the Super Mario Bros. theme has. <sighs> Yes, I mean, look, every year in after Thanksgiving, Mariah Carey wakes from her slumber <laughs> yes. to sing that goddamn song. There's that. Um, I mean, Like a Virgin is a big deal, I would say. Uh, I'm just saying, like, if you go into, like, a public square in, like, France, <laughs> you know, and you say, and you play Like a Virgin, like... Is uh, like you walk up to people. What song is this? You play well, all of these. Like, which one is gonna be the most recognizable to people? Well, I don't know about like the song itself, but like Madonna, uh, Queen Latifah, Mariah Carey. Like, those are like big names. Like, people recognize those names. Yeah. So well, uh, Mario. Yeah. People recognize Mario. People recognize Mario, but they don't rec- necessarily recognize Koji Kondo. Oh, no. No one knows. So, but at the same time, like you're putting his work on the same level as some of the most popular and best-selling artists in history. Um, Game Informer doesn't include it, but also included is this. And this is uh, Imagine by John Lennon and Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. Oh. You know, <laughs> two of the greatest rock songs of all time. Yeah. And... Uh, the Super Mario Brothers theme. You know, that's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's, it's big, a big deal. Yeah. But I'm saying, I think the Mario theme is more recognizable than all of these other songs. I think that they're all very popular songs. Yeah. I just think that globally, the Mario theme deserves this, you know? Oh, it absolutely. I'm not saying it doesn't deserve it. I'm just yeah. saying, like, I don't think, like, you can necessarily say one is more than the other mm-hmm. like because it's it's different even if like necessarily like i don't think like a virgin is that maybe not madonna's most popular song but everybody knows who madonna is yeah that's yeah. true okay uh you know it's not in the library of congress actual video games preservation matters yeah Come that's on. crazy that's crazy uh all over archive.org though yes all over there. at least somebody's doing it 
At least somebody's making yeah. games available. Uh, hey, Tynology, thanks for the 24 months. Two years. Wow. Wow. Sega bought a whole ass game studio. Yes. The craziest thing. Oh, wow. The price is crazy. Yes. Uh, Japanese gaming giant Sega has confirmed that it's buying Finland's Rovio in an all-cash deal worth uh, 760 million pounds or $775 million. That The biggest news here is that Sega has $775 million in cash yeah. <laughs> to do something like this. Uh, news first emerged back in January that Israeli mobile game company uh, Playtika had tabled a 750 million euro uh, bid for Rovio, though talks collapsed last month with no reason provided by either company. Rovio did, however, confirm that it was still in talks with other parties, with rumors emerging over the weekend that Sonic the Hedgehog maker Sega was in the mix. Now the deal is official. With in the mix. In the mix. mix, mix, mix. With Rovio noting that it expects the deal to close in Q2 of its current fiscal year, meaning sometime in the next couple of months, subject to certain customary conditions. Um, Sega's offer represents 63.1% premium on Roby's, on Rovio's uh, closing price on January, um, the last trading day before uh, reports first emerged of the potential acquisition, and a 19% premium on Rovio's final closing price on Friday, April 14th. Founded in 2003, Rovio emerged as one of the major success stories from the European technology sphere. While the company has produced dozens of games before the arrival of Android and iOS, it was the burgeoning smartphone revolution that catapulted Rovio into the mainstream consciousness, with Angry Birds becoming a global hit and a franchise spanning everything from toys to comic books to movies and a TV show. Rovio went public in 2017, hitting the NASDAQ, uh, to a somewhat lukewarm reception and a $1 billion valuation. And in the intervening years, the company's shares have mostly been in decline, generally sitting around the half of their IPO value. Uh, so it's perhaps a little surprise that Rovio had started shopping itself around to potential suitors. With Rovio under its wing, Sega says it plans to accelerate the development of its own existing games, as well as the general synergies between Sega and and Rovio's brand. Specifically, it seems that Rovio's expertise in so-called live service mobile gaming is what appealed to Sega, which refers to games designed to be played more or less indefinitely through regular content updates to keep players interested. Moreover, Sega said that Rovio's expertise can help it expand Sega's current and new games in more markets, particularly Europe and North America. On the flip side, Sega said it will use its cross-platform expertise to enable Rovio to expand beyond mobile gaming, which presumably means to consoles and or web browsers. The deal effectively allows Sega to enhance its mobile gaming presence while simultaneously allowing Rovio to move in the other direction. This will help both companies because yes. uh, Sega has... They have mobile games. They, they have, have stuff mobile in mobile games, games and they're... They do pretty good, like in the mobile market. They do need a little bit of help with the games that are a little like heavy in the mobile game genre. Yeah, like, you know, like the Sonic, like like yeah, Sonic Dash. Like the... Yeah, like those types of games. They need a little help making yeah. those a little better. Yeah. Uh, but on the other side, Rovio needs a little help. Uh, because they were we just talked about them recently because they got rid of they like renamed. Uh, they the renamed, original Angry Birds. Yeah, it's like something else because they want you to stop playing that game and go over to like the Angry Birds Two, which is a, like a live service model. Yeah, which is so. yeah. That they, they, they have some weird uh takes on mobile games. They've always had weird takes on like the gaming industry as a whole. Like back when like Angry Birds was at its peak, mm -hmm. like the this the founder and CEO of the company came out and said like, oh yeah, console games are dead. Yeah, like this like mobile is the future and we are the future, and then. PS4 came out with like the best song system of the year. So. Well, I just looked at the discography here of the Rovio, and Rovio made a lot of games. Yeah, until 2009 when Angry Birds came out. Yeah, and then they just made Angry Birds, and that's it. Yeah, they started with Angry Birds 2009, and then in 2010, Angry Bird Seasons. Yeah, Angry Birds Rio, Angry Birds Space. Bad Piggies, which is a spinoff of Angry Birds. Angry Birds Star Wars, Angry Birds Friends, Angry Birds Star Wars 2. Prequel. Oh, 
Angry Birds Go. What's that? Go usually means like that's the mobile version. It is a cart racer. Oh. So, Rovio needs some help. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they made a fuck ton of money from, from they Angry did. Birds. So, it's really not... Uh, that big of a deal but i think that this this will this merger will definitely help both companies so it's interesting that sega because for for a long time like mobile gaming was not like what it was back in like the 2010s yeah you know and in some ways it's kind of become a wasteland of just like you know match three games and like uninteresting stuff but yeah it's it's disappointing between this and assuming that Phil Spencer is like telling the truth and the whole reason they're buying Activision is because they want King for their mobile gaming mm-hmm. market. Sure, Phil, I'll get, like, well, I'll play along for a minute. <laughs> like, between these two, like, it kind of seems like develop, like, publishers are getting serious about mobile again. But I don't necessarily know or understand why that could be. Because I think it like I think it kind of just became like accepted with like very rare exceptions like Fortnite where mobile gaming was mobile gaming and traditional gaming was, you know, PC gamer and console gaming. They were like two separate things. I think there's there was somewhere around the time of Angry Birds, yeah, there was a stigma that was developed against mobile games and it was the mobile gaming industry's fault. Yeah. They uh started farting out just garbage. Yeah. Uh and all of these games that were very much the same thing, very much very simple, like uh, like uh like all Candy Crush clones because they saw Candy Crush work, so yeah. they wanted to f- they wanted to flood the market with stuff like that. You had a uh, Flappy Bird which was just you just tap the screen and make yeah. it go up. Like it was the simplest thing, but those were the ones that they were they were hoping for a really simple, easy to fart out game to just be a smash hit. Yeah. So they just flooded the market with garbage, and a lot of big companies, decide, like Sega, were like, "We could just put Sonic in a piece of garbage, and people will download it because it's Sonic." Yeah. But now I'm hoping that big companies want a piece of the mobile market and they realize that there's potential to make something that's actually good that's catered for mobile and like it doesn't have to be specifically catered for mobile like Fortnite, like just phones are super powerful now like you can just put your game on mobile and have a lot of success vampire survivors is a great example if the if the controls are basic enough and the game isn't that graphically intensive or you can make it work you can it, it could be yeah. great so i the 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 mobile market is huge for gaming i think it is the biggest market i think it's technically the, yeah. the biggest it's, console yeah. yeah um it's just it's untapped by a lot of these uh big companies that we see as the big gaming companies yeah. because uh we take gaming a little more seriously <laughs> but i think that there is a lot of potential to have these serious games on mobile in some capacity yeah. and sega knows that because they're fucking putting the uh, sonic and shit like the, like the actual games like the actual sega genesis games they're putting them yeah. on on mobile and they are great yeah so uh i'm hoping microsoft sees that potential too with their yeah merger that well i'm i'm sure that they'd see that you know if they if they keep saying that they want activision blizzard for king specifically right yeah you know and he you know when phil spencer talks about it he talks about like really trying to get a foothold in the mobile gaming sphere yeah and also you know you can control like call of duty those too yeah Yeah. (laughs) i'm still excited for warzone on the phone because right now I liked the first map that Warzone had. Mm-hmm. You can't play that anymore. Right. There that's what the mobile version is going to be. It's going to be the first map. Right. And I want to play that again. Uh and also I have that Razor Edge and it'll run great on that. Yeah. So, uh I I I do want to play Warzone when it's finally on mobile. Anyway. Uh so there you go. Yes. Oh, hey, we're not done with Sega. Nope. Because it's Knuckles time. Sonic the Hedgehog is now a successful movie franchise as well as a gaming one with two big silver screen outings for the mascot. Um, Things are far from finished here, though. We know a third film is on the way and a spinoff TV series all about Knuckles uh, has also been previously announced. And speaking of which, 
That project is now spinning into production. Confirming the news on the official Sonic Twitter, work has officially begun on the show. Uh, as reported by Variety, Idris Elba will return to voice the titular Echidna. Uh, he will be joined by Adam Paley, who plays recurring character uh, Wade Whipple in the films and in the Knuckles TV show. Also confirmed uh, includes Edie Patterson, uh, Julian Barrett, Scott uh, Medusi, and Ellie Taylor. The series will take place between the events of the second and third films, um, but little is known about what it will be, what it will entail. We do know that Knuckles agrees to train Wade as his protege and teach him the ways of the Echidna Warrior. Who the hell's Wade? Uh, he was the not. He was James Marsden's cop friend from the movie. Oh, uh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, uh, I guess I should see the second the movie's movie. also on Prime. Amazon Prime. Oh, good. So I'll, I'll do yeah. that. Yeah, I do want to see that. Yeah. I like the first one. The first one. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I like Knuckles. I want to yeah. see more Knuckles. I like that how the um the tweet that they put out is his hat from the anime. Yeah, that's cool. That's the, fun. The, the, the uh, original video animation. Yeah. That's really cool. That means that that's not CGI. <laughs> that means that at some point they have the actual prop for yeah, some reason. That it maybe Adam Paley's character wears the hat, and that's why Knuckles wears the hat. Is Jeff Fowler the the he's, director of the movie? Also? I believe so. I I think he's directing the pilot. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I'll be watching that. That's fucking too many shows. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably not gonna watch it. But it'll be nice to know that the Sonic Cinematic Universe is alive and well uh okay let's this is something i put on last minute uh okay. retroid pocket what the hell is this called flip the retroid pocket flip is delayed okay uh i bought this exact version and uh it hasn't shipped <laughs> other people got theirs uh some reviewers got them but i'm pretty sure i don't know if they send out like review units i think they just I think you. I think they just send it out to customers. Anyway, uh, according to Retro Handheld, unfortunately, it looks like the Retro Pocket Flip will be delayed two to three business days due to a paint issue. It's reported to have been caught early and shouldn't cause any major delays, except for the three to two to three business days. I mean, right. apparently, it was supposed to start shipping today. Oh, let's find out. Oh, uh, that was tweeted on April tenth. <laughs> So it should it should be on its way now. Let's see. Let's check my emails. Retroid. Nope. Okay. Liars. <laughs> uh I don't know what the paint issue is. I assume it I mean, it doesn't that's not paint, that version, but yeah. um that is a they haven't done transparent before, I don't think. Maybe. Or uh, this the, the transparent red is like the new color. Uh, I feel like that might be one of the issues. But anyway, I'm just happy that they delayed it because yeah. the Retroid Pocket 3 had a lot of manufacturing issues that they just shipped. So, fuck it. Like, <laughs> like let it be yeah. delayed. It's fine. Uh, I introduced my boss to the concept of a uh, portable emulator oh, God. Uh, systems. You want to give like, him a portable emulator? I, you know, if you have a spare one lying around, <laughs> I'm, I, I have get a few. Him good graces. Um, yeah, because that's what I do at work. I actually I'm think I have place. another one of the ones that I gave you. I think I have another one. Of oh, them. really? Yeah. Um, ugh. Yeah, so... I mean, this is going to be fun, but it looks yeah. like it's going to be pretty much exactly the same as the three plus, just just flippable. I think I'm getting but, sick of making these videos. I feel like there's a market because like, people like like the the Game Boy SP and like the DS. The fact that it's like that clamshell design, people like yeah. genuinely enjoy that. So I mean, this is cool because it runs on Android. Yeah. So like you'll be able to uh, do remote play and stuff yeah. with, with it in a clamshell. So that in like a little Game Boy Advance SP style yeah. clamshell, you can play playstation 5 games yeah like that's with a lot of finagling that's pretty cool i'm getting shit on in the chat for calling ova's original video animations i mean that's what they are he's just flexing i, I forgot what the acronym was so i had to spell it out in my head <laughs> um anyway so i don't know when the hell i'm getting my retroid pocket i have no idea 
Anyway, uh, Nintendo hacker released from jail. <laughs> <laughs> but still owes them money. This is relevant because yes. uh, this will be me. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo hacker Gary Bowser, who was sentenced to 40 months in jail for piracy and received I thought, it was a- Doug- I thought his name was Doug Bowser. No, Doug Bowser is the president of Nintendo I know, America I thought- and who would not take a picture with me at E3. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the same name. No, okay. the, the last name is the same. Gary Bowser is the hacker who was sentenced to 40 months in jail for piracy and received a hefty fine of close to $15 million for his involvement in the hacking group Team Executor uh, and has now been released from prison. Having served several months of his sentence, Bowser has been released early in part due to good behavior and time already served. But he is still legally obligated to pay Nintendo $10 million for his role in allowing Switch users uh, to hack their systems so that pirated games could be played on them. As part of the uh, consent judgment that Bowser agreed to, Nintendo will be able to take 25 to 30% of his gross monthly income of the $10 million that Bowser owes Nintendo. He has only been able to pay $175 so far from his earnings while he was in prison. I have been making payments of $25 per month, which they've been taking from my income because I had a job in a federal prison. Uh, so, so, so far I paid $175, Bowser told Torrent Freak. When Bowser was first sentenced, Nintendo's lawyers, AJ Singh, uh, said in a court uh, transcript via Axios that the company wanted to send a message to other Switch hackers. Fuck you. <laughs> this is a very <laughs> significant moment for us. It's the, per- it's the purchase of video games that sustains Nintendo and Nintendo's ecosystem. And it's the games that makes the people smile. Uh, it is for this reason that we do that we do all we can to prevent Nintendo uh, prevent games on Nintendo systems from being stolen. Uh, Nintendo is notorious for going after hackers and software pirates of its video games. And a more recent example, the company won a court case against D Storage, a website operator that hosted pirated games on its cloud storage site. The Paris Court of Appeals ruled in favor of Nintendo and ordered D Storage to pay over $480,000 in compensation to Nintendo, as well as $27,000 in legal fees. They royally fucked this guy. They, like, they didn't just send a message. They sent, like, they sent a horse's head in everybody's debt. That's I don't even this think is. this guy was, like, the main guy. Probably he was not. one of. Yeah. Um, they screwed him. Um, yeah. His life is basically ruined. Yeah, and... And, and Nintendo says uh, we we need to preserve, uh, you know, where people can purchase the games. Let the let me make let me purchase the games. You yeah, know, let How us about purchase half of these games. That's the big problem. Like, I completely understand needing to uh, take legal action against somebody who is like giving away your product for free that you are trying to sell. But if they're giving away your product that you're not trying to sell, what are they yeah. stop? What are they ruining? Exactly. You know. So, I mean, but the problem is they were giving away like Switch games yeah. and shit. So like it it was pretty bad. It's just a lot. It's just a lot to to screw this guy with. Yeah. It's not like this isn't a warning. This is like a. This is this is a burial. Yeah, they're, they're they're out for blood now. Yeah, and they're hoping that like if by everybody seeing it, it'll like just scare them off from doing it. But like, it's not gonna stop anybody. Like, it's just gonna keep going. This is worth uh, bringing up. Also, uh, we don't have a story for it, but uh, Nintendo struck down uh, Point Crow. A lot of his videos, he does uh, Zelda mods and 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 pokemon mods he just he just he's like, he's like a let's player yeah and he does uh modded pokemon and modded uh, uh zelda and, and and modded mario odyssey and stuff um the problem is he released his own uh hack for modded breath of the wild where it's multiplayer mm-hmm. so Instead of Nintendo taking down the mod because they have no legal grounds to do that because he's not sell he's not giving away the game he's giving away a a, a crack mm. to make it multiplayer so you still need the game. Um, in order to take that down, instead of taking that down because they have no legal standing to do that, they struck a bunch of his videos. So they yeah. a bunch of his videos got deleted, and they gave him two strikes on his channel. 
because if he gets a third, his whole channel gets deleted. Yeah. Which is like the most nefarious way they can go about that. Yeah. And we talk about it a lot more extensively on the Nintendo podcast. Which should go up Thursday. It might go up tomorrow. I don't know how that's how that's working. But uh we talked to him for over an hour and that should be fun. So stay tuned. So stay tuned. Wolf Den Dad in the chat. Congratulations, Wolf Den, you reached eight hundred thousand subscribers. Let's Ooh. go. Hell yeah, brother. Yeah. Do I get a net jet to the win slash encore and tower suites? No, that doesn't mean more money. <laughs> it just means more people can see your son say fart jokes yes. on the internet. Yeah. I will say though, I did uh, get word that we might have Vessi back. Yeah. So, so Dad, you're Good. you're getting a phone call. Because these sh- these shoes are starting. I, to I need that. shoes. I need shoes. I can't be giving everybody else <laughs> shoes. I need them. Uh, Coxingo says, "Hey, chat, is the volume a little bit low? I forgot to adjust that. Uh, it'll be fixed next time. I think the uh, somebody emailed me and said that the volume on." iTunes, I think, is low. Okay, but it's it's low on everything. I think yeah. I, I need to I need to mess with it. Um, it's too late now. I I don't want to adjust yeah. in the middle of the podcast for people who are raising the volume. You know. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's move on to uh, Suicide Squad delayed to next year. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, Rocksteady has officially delayed Suicide Squad: Kill the Justice League to. February 2nd, 2024, quite a few months from its previous May 26th, 2023 uh, date. It was originally supposed to come out on May 23rd. Now it's coming out in February next year. That's insane. The developer Didn't they just delay it? Yeah. Okay. The developer announced the news on Twitter, writing in a statement, we made the tough but necessary decision to take the time needed to work on getting the game to be the best experience for players. Uh, Thank you for your amazing community. Thank you to the amazing community for the continued support, patience, and understanding. There is much more to be shared in the months ahead, and we look forward to seeing you in Metropolis next year. It was only previously, uh, it was, sorry, it's only the most recent delay for Kill the Justice League, which was previously set for a 2022 release before being moved to spring 2023. Last month, Bloomberg reported that the game would be delayed following backlash from the February 2023 PlayStation State of Play. During the live stream, it was revealed that Kill the Justice League would be a live service game with a battle pass and required an internet connection even in solo play garnering controversy. However, it is unclear if the delay means Rocksteady will be overhauling any of Kill the Justice League's live service elements. At the time of Bloomberg's article, reporter Jason Schreier noted that the delays like these uh, usually for polish rather than to overhaul the core gameplay. This latest delay means that Kill the Justice League will come out nearly nine years after the most recent Arkhamverse game, Arkham Knight. It will have oh players God. choose between one of four supervillains, Deadshot, Harley Quinn, King Shark, and Captain Boomerang, who are tasked with stopping Brainiac's invasion of Metropolis. I think this delay is to overhaul key mechanics. Yeah, you, you don't like, delay a game like that much for polishing. Like yeah, they, they have to be like, I don't want to say they're removing the always online requirement or like completely like changing it from like what it was, but they've got to be like lessening that stuff in some yeah, way. Yeah, they're tweaking a lot of things after the backlash of some of the trailers and, and how people started to realize that the game was going to work out. They started, they probably started to tweak some stuff and they realized tweaking stuff will break other things. So they need to just yeah take a lot more time to 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 overhaul some of the core mechanics yeah because i think like the bullshit ass like uh like uh all the menus with the numbers all the menus with the numbers and then and the loot system and all that stuff yeah it's 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 incredible to me how like this basically had the same uh strategy as marvel's avengers had where like they entice you with a little thing and they don't really tell you a lot about the game. And then there's like a big delay. Yeah. And then they start to show you a little bit more. And a little bit more. And you're like, okay, this is just a four-player co-op thing. What else? And then like right before the game's going to come out, live service game with loot and like menus and Yeah, crap. no, it was a slap in the face. Yeah. Like nobody had any idea it was going to yeah. be like that. So, and we saw how Avengers turned out. The game's getting shut down by the end of the year. So, 
Yeah, that's it, why I think that they they know that this is a huge problem. It's it's, it's ridiculous with. that they thought they can like squeeze in just one more live service game. Live service games are, are supposed to be forever games. It's the game you keep playing over yeah. and over again. You keep putting out money into. But the problem is when every game's a forever game, you got to make your pick. You're only going to play one. And for yeah. a lot of people, that's WoW. That's Apex. That's Fortnite. Like those games already exist. Yeah. Like don't stop trying to make another one. Uh, Let's quickly go through the rest of this. Ubisoft plus coming to xbox oh my god okay i yeah. thought they were like partnering i mean they kind of are yeah well it's just, well this was this is on playstation already I think. yes yeah uh ubisoft subscription service place uh ubisoft plus is now available on xbox consoles uh for 18 dollars a month players can subscribe to ubisoft's new subscription tier multi-access which gives you access to the same 100 plus games uh sorry gives you access to the same 100 plus pc games premium editions day one releases and discounts you get on the $15 PC access plan, only with select games also available on Xbox. Uh, the plan includes uh, pretty much all the Assassin's Creed games up until Valhalla, the Far Cry games, For Honor, both South Park games, um, Rainbow Six Siege, all three Watch Dogs are available. So it's like basically all the big Ubisoft games. For $18 a month, this is not included in Game Pass. It is a separate purchase and it's more expensive than Game Pass. That's crazy. Yeah. That it's more expensive. Yeah. Game Pass is 15 a month. This is 18. So yeah. hope you like Ubisoft games. That's great. Don't yeah. they have a deal with uh Amazon? Yes. It's part of like Luna, but it's yes. still like a higher tier on, yes. on Luna. Yes. Okay. So this is just basically um it's the PC uh tier, but like for three extra dollars you get multi platform access. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Wait. Oh, so you have to pay? Do you have to pay for the PC tier, and then you pay a little extra to get Xbox, or can you just pay for Xbox? No, it's it's PC tier and oh, Xbox. That's dumb. Yeah. Who's getting this? I don't. You I gotta know. love Ubisoft. I mean, you gotta love the same game a hundred <laughs> times in a row. True. That's not fair. South Park is different. Medicine says, you like chasing boring objectives scattered across a giant map? We've got hundreds of those <laughs> games for you on Ubisoft Plus. You, you like climbing towers to reveal more of the map? What's crazy is that Breath of the Wild has that. But for some reason, it's fine in Breath of the Wild. You know what it is? You don't have to really do it in Breath of the Wild. No. No. And, like, you climb the tower in Breath of the Wild. And, like, you climb the tower in a Ubisoft game. You press the button and the map scans. In Breath of the Wild, they make you earn it. You have to like actually look and like pinpoint where you want to go. Mm. So gives you a sense of accomplishment. Well, who the hell's Joseph Statton? We talked about him last week. Yeah, I forgot. Joseph Statton was one oh, of the, the Halo guy. Yeah. He has he he announced he has a new project. He left three four three industries. It's a big blow to the the company. He has a new thing going on, and that new thing is he is he has joined Netflix Games as a creative director. For a brand new AAA multi-platform game and original IP. Multi-platform? Yes. Interesting. Yes. Okay. Um, and the AAA game. Just, so, just, just read his tweet. I did. Oh, oh, that was it? That was it. Okay. Um, so, like, uh, we've said before, like, Netflix has been, like, pretty serious about, like, getting into games. Um, they, they have, like, a pretty decent strategy on mobile right now um yeah the, where where you can uh they like just have games for free with your subscription yeah and they'll and like you log into netflix and then it'll send you to the game on the app store yeah to download and just log in with your netflix it's the netflix version of the game yeah. yeah and they're like they're like pretty like well-known indie games like shredder's revenge 12 minutes yeah uh oxen free like games like that kentucky route zero um so now like this is their next step this is them like now putting their foot down saying, all right, now we're going to do triple A multi-platform games. Let's get the guy who got Halo Infinite across the finish line to help. us. So out. how will they do this? Like they, do they have cloud streaming set up? I don't know if we know that. If we mean for games. Yeah. Cause like, how are they going to get, uh, well, I, I mean, it, it, it sounds they, like they're just going to make a game. This, They're just going to make a game and release it on Xbox and PlayStation and PC. I can't imagine them getting Joseph Staten 
to uh not have like a graphically intensive like big budget triple a like yeah, when i'm thinking of that i'm thinking like there's there you need some power like if this isn't gonna be a mobile game no no this is gonna be this is gonna be a console game and a pc game that's what that's what i'm seeing this as so they gotta release it for everything so then yeah. what i mean uh, so then Net- netflix is just the production studio yeah like, like they're not gonna house it or anything this is you know this is probably gonna be like a tie-in to something you know okay, like another ne- netflix show like, i don't, I don't want to say it's gonna be stranger things but let's use that as an example it's gonna, it'll be a Stranger Things, a triple A Stranger Things game, maybe, or like a triple A Bridgerton game. Maybe they're doing what movie studios were doing for comics, where comics were like the starter point for movies. Yeah, maybe they're thinking games are the same. Yeah, make a game that we can then use for a Netflix original series, mm. which I think is bad because comics are low budget yeah and games are very 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 high budget budget. yeah yeah so that's kind of like an ass backwards way of doing it they did do like they bought mark millar's comic book company to like you know use his because it's it's so stupid because mark millar's comic book company is just his comics yeah this is all his so like they bought that so like they can have like comic book ip and as far as i know they made one season of one of his comics and it wasn't good yeah, Take Two uh, Interactive made a whole comic book division to get comics for to make ideas for games, and I think the whole thing fell through. Yeah. I haven't, I've never heard anything about. I remember it's funny when that happened because Mark Millar was like, "This is big, you know." Uh, Warner Brothers owns DC, Disney owns Marvel, and now Netflix owns my company. It's the same <laughs> thing. <laughs> it's not at all the same thing. Um, THQ Nordic shoots down claims that AEW Fight Forever is ready. Oh, yeah. So, do you want to just summarize this? Yes, please. So, uh, AEW president and owner Tony Khan uh, came out and said, I can't, uh, about the upcoming video game, AEW Fight Forever, I can't say the exact date. There's a lot of things that are going into it, and I don't want to step on anybody with that. But it's coming out very soon. The game is finished. However, uh, Per Holenbo, the global senior manager uh, at TSQ Nordic, said, I mean, if you want an unfinished game, sure, we could release it now. The game is going really well and is getting there, but it's not 100%. So, yeah, just another rumor on Twitter, I fear. So, you have the president of AEW saying, like, the game is ready, and then you have the people actually making the game saying, no, it's not. (laughs) That sounds like he's trying to get it out to meet a deadline, and they're like, we are not meeting that deadline. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, in fairness, he is funding it. Yeah. So, like, I guess he wants to, and it's been in development for a very long time. Yeah. So, I guess they want to try to get it out like as quickly as possible. He's, or maybe he saw a, a, a vertical on slice it. on it, and he's like, "This looks good, good enough." It. And they're yeah. like, "No, there's so much more polish we yeah. need to do to this game." It's it's interesting because like I I, I find it interesting the way like they are like they're handling video games versus the way WWE does, where they just basically let uh, 2K make it and they like tell them what they want in it and like give input and stuff whereas aew is like actually funding the project so i guess there's a little bit more hands-on but at the same time like it's clear they've never made a video game before yeah. and i think the the protracted development time and statements like this like goes to show you that like they might be in over their head when it comes to when it comes to making games the last thing we have here is harry potter quidditch game i don't give a fuck or a shit or a good goddamn <laughs> uh well now we know why quidditch wasn't in hogwarts legacy because it's here there was a quidditch game like back when it was okay to like harry potter and from what i this understand, looks like fun. a this looks like a this is gonna be bad this looks like the like the art style looks like just like the throwaway fortnite art style it does actually yeah i don't i don't this is not this is gonna be bad uh yeah hope not i mean this is like one of the act like legitimately cooler aspects of the harry potter universe but quidditch yeah why it's fun it's a fun thing no the cool aspect of the harry potter universe is when they go like this and someone blows up (laughs) that's the cool harry potter stuff okay fine you need to people blow it up sometimes i want to watch a fake sport sometimes we want to watch this yeah quid of the week quid of the week quid of the week
And I say watch because this week it's, it's a TikTok oh. because there's like nothing good on, on Twitter. I don't know what that's about. Oh, maybe because like the guy who owns it like is slowly tearing it apart. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I completely forgot that uh, it's very difficult for me to play something <laughs> on here. I, I really messed this up. How can I? Oh, wait. No, I know how to. I know what to do. I got this is easy. It's easy, Will. Don't All worry right. about it. Okay. I can just do this, and then I could play this, <laughs> and then put the microphone. There you go. There you go, and here it is. Make you sweat. Oh, go back, go back, go back. Mama, look the way you move. I'm gonna make you sweat. I'm gonna make you groove. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could play that. I love that. <laughs> Such a great song, but it's so hard to play. He's right. It's a hard song. I actually used to know how to play that riff back in the day. It was hard, but like you can get it like within a couple of days. Tell him that. Okay. Tell him My that. My dumbass can play it. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, I want to do an unboxing. Okay. And, then, and then we'll uh, read uh, everybody's things from yes. last week. Yeah, let me pull up the Discord. Uh, here's the thing that I want to unbox. It's in this tiny little box right here. That is a tiny box. Oops, too bad I opened it already. Oh, uh, what a twist. There's a letter here. Hello. I recently found your videos, and I really like the ones about the RG35XX and the Steam Deck arcade machine. We'll need to make my own since it's a great idea. I make this 3D printed TPU cover for the RG35XX and want to send you one. I hope you like it. If you want to show your viewers, my store is Seahorse Laser Design on Etsy. And I make I made a code, Wolfden15. So you can get 15% off. There you go. Look at that. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. Here it is. So I guess this is a case for the RG35XX, which I have out. It's, this that, is it's that thing. Yeah. Okay. This is the one you 3D printed. Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh my god, it's the same thing. It's the same. He made the same thing, except this is like a he used a, is that... a flexible uh, uh, filament. Okay. Uh, give me. Yeah. yeah. Also, he did uh, the first layer as a separate thing, which is much prettier. Yeah. Than what I did. <laughs> Mine is messed, but I will say mine has the foam in, in yes. the front. You gotta put, you gotta put some. Sort of well, foam you in take the foam. the foam out. Yeah, I guess I can put my foam <laughs> in in his thing. Yeah, it's it, it's literally the. Well, actually, no, I don't have a back for mine. Yeah, that's the thing. But this back looks exactly like the one that I printed for the uh uh, what do you call it? The MiU Mini Plus. Yeah. There you go. Here's here's the. Hey, will you close? Oh, you know it's getting stuck on the. What's it uh, getting stuck on? Oh, I have this three printed stupid back piece. What's the? What is this? There do? you go. It literally just makes it thicker. Oh. Uh, there you go. That's it. Oh, Thank that's you very nice. Much. This yeah. is. I do like this uh, rubber filament. I need yeah. to get some of this nice flexible filament. Now in a little box. There you go. I started watching this uh, action figure YouTube channel, The Foosh. Mm -hmm. He was talking about how he just got a 3D printer and he's like playing around with it and like what a disaster it was for him. Like yeah, it together. it's it's a disaster. Yeah, uh, exactly. at first, but then you figure it out and All that's right. fine. I I've been printing these. Check these out. I modeled this myself. I'm Ooh, very proud of this. big boy. This looks like a wreck, but oh, there's there's a uh, what do you call it? Uh, supports. This is all yeah. supposed to come out. So this is uh for my desk all my like audio interface and stuff mm -hmm. is all going to be hidden under this okay and i i printed a bunch of these and your mother your mother there you go so i printed a bunch of these right yeah and they lock into each other you see the little puzzle yeah, piece yeah, yeah they lock into each other so mm -hmm. they they go across my whole desk Oh. And there's one that has like a little monitor cut out where my monitor goes. Yeah. And all my stuff, all my cables will Ooh, be hidden. That's the important nice. part yeah. about it. So I'm get I'm I'm getting there. Very good. We're, we're making progress. Also, I printed this and I printed this. No, I didn't print this. I bought this. But I printed this. Yes. I did a little bit of a shittier job than the Etsy guy, but whatever. 
What program are you using? Yo, bro, I use the Prusa Slicer, which is like <laughs> not what you're supposed to use to model something. But it's literally in that program, you can make rectangles. And here, give me that while it's while my yeah. camera's on me. You can make rectangles and cylinders, and that's what I did. I made rectangles and cylinders until it formed this. And I can freaking break out the supports here. There you go. And now I'm going to have a bunch of these on my desk. Yay. There you go. Everybody be proud of me. Anyway, last week's Wolf Dead podcast. Yes. Uh, we have Caleb Fox who says, Will, it's super interesting to hear your takes on the Mario movie. After you said each take, I thought to myself, I didn't even think about it like that. But you're totally right. I guess after going to film school, you can never see a movie casually without analyzing it. That's not true. Like, you can. But sometimes it gets turned on without you knowing it and it can either make a film better or it can make a film worse. <laughs> and I think the problem is if it's a, if it's already like a bad film, it like really makes it much worse. But if it's a good film, you can just turn your brain off and just enjoy it as is. And then go back and appreciate all the finer touches later. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's a blessing and a curse, really. Uh, Patrick Willems actually has a great video on his channel on how to analyze film. I would suggest watching that because, like, that is like gives you a baseline on like what to look for and why things are the way they are. Borden with Bully says, "Hey, Will, what are some DC comic storylines that are must reads? I just got DC Unlimited and don't know where to start." Uh that's a God, you asked the most broad philosophical question of all comic reading. Uh Depends on the character. If you want to just read every, like, just general everything, there actually exists, um, like, comics that are about the history of the DC Universe. It's, like, called the history of the DC Universe or DC Legacies or things like that. Uh, I would say, because I think we're now in the infinite front... No. They're about to start the dawn of DC. I would say... Try to go back to about the Infinite Frontier era and check that stuff out because that's like a good starting point for like this current wave of DC Comics that we're in. Or, you know, just just read like all, every Batman story. <laughs> yeah. Um, Eric says, I wonder if Nintendo Live in September will be early in the month along with PAX West, maybe like an additional thing along with whatever they do at the actual convention. Actually, that makes a lot of sense. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. PAX West is uh, in September. Mm -hmm. So, and it's in Seattle. So that makes a lot of sense. That might line up and then maybe they'll actually have something to show. Yeah. Or uh, maybe Nintendo will be at PAX West with something legitimate. Yeah, they, they haven't announced the a firm date. So. Yeah. Doomy Doomy says, my fiance loved the music everyone is hating on and they made the right choice. It was for the casuals who are not that gamer or a Nintendo fan. That's what I, I kind of, I, I'm not, they made the right choice for the casuals. I don't know if it was the right choice overall, but I didn't mind it. I think they should give the casuals more credit and pick either better songs or the music from the game. <laughs> okay. That's that's just me. Renaissance, Renaissance Ninja says, Other Bob was too rough on the movie. That's you. you that's I know. It's me. I have a name. He's a man. <laughs> no, I am not an Adam. <laughs> okay. Now we're in the chat. Willow Davis yeah. says, Thoughts on me taking an edible before watching the Mario <laughs> movie bootleg last week. <laughs> last week? You did it already? <laughs> I thought you were going to ask our advice of whether or not you should do it. Uh, I mean, good for that you. could hey, help. That could possibly help. I want to know what your thoughts were. Yeah. Yo, Bob, did you see Sonic Waffle Maker on Twitter? I, I did. saw that. I almost, I almost bought it. I almost bought it. Yeah. And then I was like, where am I going to put it? And yeah. I was like, I have a lot of cabinets. And I was like, no. I thought I had a lot of cabinets. I do not. Uh, you want to borrow some cabinet space? <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would. You know what? I would kill for your counter space. Because I have a lot of counters. Yeah, space. pretty pretty good. Got nothing to complain about there. Got little tiny closets, but we got a lot of little tiny closets. I'm sure it just adds up to one big closet. Yeah, kind yeah. of. Well, then we made a whole room of closets. Yeah. So because we have little tiny closets. Yeah. 
Would you buy a Steam Deck right now or wait for the ROG out? The ROG Ally. I would buy a Steam Deck right now. I speculate yeah. the ROG Ally is going to be one billion dollars. It's going to be state. very expensive. Yeah, yeah. Um, any previews of what this week's video is? Yeah, uh, I streamed it two days ago. It, I I made a I I put together a, a a metal Game Boy Advance, and that's what the video is. Um, is Zim in the window watching me? There's a window. Oh, that window. I had a cool idea for that window. I don't know if I'm going to do it, though. I want to put two monitors in the window All right. and make and put a live stream of, like, the New York skyline. Ooh. So then when when uh, when it cuts to your camera, you have, like... Oh, it looks like a... It looks like a window. I was going to say it looks like a talk show, like the, uh, to the Tonight Show. Ki- it would yeah. kind of look like that, but it would look a little yeah. more realistic, hopefully. Uh, hey, Bob, are you releasing a video on the 3D printer soon? It would be cool to see you make a Raspberry Pi console with it sometime. I'm not going to make a video on the printer, but I will be using the printer in videos for sure. That's why I got it. Yeah. Well, that's not the whole reason, but it's a lot of the reason I got it because I can use it for, for projects. Also, like all this dumb shit, like like a case, like I don't need to buy one off Etsy. I could just print it. Yeah. Bob, Will, how can I figure out what the what game music is stuck in my head? I don't remember any lyrics, nor the game, nor even if it was a game. You can do the thing. Google now, you can just hum it into the phone. That works. Sometimes. Okay. You can also hum it into Twitter and send it to us. To Wolf. We'll yeah. <laughs> don't do the LA sky because of air pollution. Hey, there's yeah. air pollution in, in New York, too. Yeah. Loved the 3D printed accessories video. I just bought my first printer recently, and I've been learning modeling. Hope to see more from you on that. What program do you use? Because I, I think I, I, I've been I was messing around with some program, and I just could not figure it out at all. Does that come with a program, or is there? Yeah, the Prusa slicer, but it's right. really just for like adjusting the file for print it's not really for like modeling yeah, yeah. things although you can model things like i did yeah. with that but it's it's very rudimentary tinkercad yeah that's cool but like i want to mess with that i want i think yeah. tinkercad might be the easiest thing to do but i want to be able to put like upload shit like i have a game boy model uh, that, I, that i need to mess with h3 uses uh fusion 360 that's the one that i couldn't fucking figure out uh cooter looter says there's an ipad app called nomad that's very good and it's a one-time payment i'm gonna look into tinkercad but i want to be able to mess with a model that's already that already exists yeah. is the problem i use magic and sorcery that's what everybody uses yeah blender people use blender yeah i should try blender blender does a lot more you know i only know blender because it was why everyone uses the benchmark graphics cards you can yeah you can like animate and shit yeah and it's, a, it's a, so that might be a little much yeah uh on shape it's browser based and you can upload models you can upload existing models in tinkercad i i would love that because tinkercad seems like the easiest thing to use yeah all right anyway that's it Okay. Thanks for hanging out. Everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on, it's not anchor.fm anymore. We're also an audio really? podcast. No, it's uh, Spotify for podcasts. Oh, yeah. they bought it. Yeah. Well, they bought it a while ago, and then they just, like, retired the Anchor name. Interesting. Yeah. So, we're available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, wherever you get your podcasts from. And no matter where you get your podcasts from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate us, and review us, because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Cool, guys. Go say hello to Jess Adele. She's streaming Pokemon Stadium, which I hear is horrible. But uh, maybe you can go over there and see what you can even do on Nintendo Switch yeah. Online to, to play Pokemon Stadium. I think you just get stuck with level 50 Pokemon. They just, uh, 
I don't know. Uh, Wood just rated her too. I figured. Uh, all right, go over there. We'll see you later. I probably won't stream till Thursday. Uh, goodbye, question mark. Bye. Okay. Am I muted?